we now have, over the past few weeks, certain members of the government, and I don't quite understand what their agenda is, but they have started to proceed on a frolic of trying to discredit myself, Amajit, and Manji. They are, as usual, trying to kill the messengers. I would have thought that they could have seen as clearly as we have that there is an issue here, a very important issue, involving important people, an issue that needs to be investigated thoroughly. And I would have thought that people like Anwar Shari, who we invited here today, people like Zarein, who has thrown accusations at me in the past, I would have thought that people like them would be on our side People like them would want to see investigations conducted and concluded into this matter. I would have expected these people to have supported what we are doing. What I can't understand is why they are throwing innuendos, insinuations at us and trying to discredit our cred credibility. The issue raised by <coughs> Anwar Shari a couple of days ago was in relation to funds, funds utilised to support Bala in London, the funds used for Bala to pay his lawyers, and the declarations that he insists that we all make as far as our income is concerned. Now, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as all of us are concerned, these issues are wholly irrelevant. We have, in the past, emphasized the fact that we have provided Bala with pro bono <coughs> legal services. We have not charged Bala one cent for our professional fees. We don't intend charging Bala any money for our professional fees. Why is it necessary for us, in the circumstances in which I've just explained, why is it necessary for us to declare our income and de declare our assets to somebody who has suddenly emerged as a party involved in this whole thing. I have never seen him mention anything in the past except now. There are comments made by Anwar Shari that indicate that he has actually no idea about the true facts. And if I may quote, he has said that myself, Manjit, and Amajit had accompanied Bala to Paris in order for the police there to record his statement. He is curious about Manjit's role here. He doesn't seem to be giving up on fighting on Anwar's behalf. Now, if you combine statements like that, it is quite apparent that Anwar has not been briefed properly as to the facts. He's shooting from the hip. First of all, there was only Manji who went to Paris with Bala, not us, not myself or Amaji. Anwar has gone on to say, the question on everybody's mind is how did Bala Subramaniam fund his stay in London and afford the fees of his prominent lawyers? I don't know where he's got this from because I don't think it is a question on everybody's mind at all because we have explained this before. Bala funded himself in London and I will tell you how. Remember, Bala received 750000 from Deepak Jayakishan. Deepak Jayakishan was not using his own money to pay Bala. Deepak Jayakishan was using somebody else's money. Bala has quite candidly informed us that he still has 250,000 ringgit left of this money because he is not a stupid man. He knew that immediately he came out of, where, of hiding and informed us what was happening or what had happened to him, his funds would have been cut off immediately. And therefore, he had to save this money. 
because he knew he would need it. So he's an, in exile in Chennai, utilizing the money that Deepak Jayakishan gave him. Now he has basically said here, he's curious about my role in fighting on Anwar's behalf. Who is he to tell me what I can do or I can't do? And I am not fighting anything on Anwar's behalf. I am basically dealing with the situations as they develop. This man doesn't even know the fact that Nala Karupan was charged with offences that carried the death sentence. He was in Sungai Bulo. Anwar was in Sungai Bulo at the same time. And I was seeing Nala Karupan and I was seeing Anwar in prison. Now, I was defending a man who was facing the death sentence. He was going to hang. And they were hell-bent on hanging him unless he was prepared to implicate Anwar in fabricated stories. All this is facts. This man knows nothing about it. And yet he chooses to make these sort of statements. Nala Karupan and Anwar were friends way beyond a political link-up. The political link-up was recent. And for some reason or other, a very, very close friendship ended. Nala Karupan used to come to my house after I got him acquitted, cleared of the death sentence charges. Nala Karupan used to come to my house and visit me very regularly. He has brought his wife to my house. He has brought his children to my house. I know Anwar. Now, if two friends have fallen apart, is it a crime, a sin, to try to bring two friends together? I wasn't interested in a political link-up or tie-up between them or bringing them back together as political parties. I was trying to bring together two friends who I thought mattered to each other. Friendships go beyond politics. And that is what mattered to me, bringing two people together. He says that Anwar has paid fees. Nonsense. Anwar has not paid one cent to me, to Amrik, to Amarjit. We have had no money from this man. We have had no money from anybody. And we are not going to ask for money. We don't want fees. I mean, he doesn't even know there's a concept called pro bono, where you work for, you do for nothing. And he doesn't even know that I have been doing that for something close to 40 years. I have dealt with many, many clients where I have not even collected money. So if the mainstream newspapers want to give this man credit and give these wild fabricated statements mileage, then they should equally give us the space and the time to refute all these lies that this man is telling. And it's about time that if at all they're going to publish things from this man ever again, then they should go back, cross-check with the people who are being named as to the truth of these allegations. And they have not done that. Anwar Shari says he has proof. I challenge him. I challenge him. Bring the proof. Show us the proof. Show us what you really have. Because you have nothing, Anwar Shari. And that nothing is basically what you really have both in your hands and in your head. And that's all I really want to tell this man. So he is a liar, and I'm calling him a liar to his face, and so far as this is concerned.